Guys, in this video, we are going to explore some relationships between um, right triangles and, sim and the similar right triangles. So if you want to get a piece of paper and do this exploration with me, you're welcome to. If not, I will just explain what results you would get if you were doing this. So if you take out a rectangular piece of paper and you draw a diagonal from corner to corner, to corner all right, then um, it's going to form two congruent right triangles. I want you to cut along that diagonal. So cut along there. All right, I want you to label your big triangle, one of the triangles with one, two, and three. Those are the angles that we're labeling. Keep in mind that angle two would be the right angle. And then what we're going to do is on the other congruent right triangle, we are going to draw an altitude. An altitude is going to go from that right angle, okay, this was the right angle and the other big right triangle, go from that right angle and then you're going to go straight down to that side. So you want to make sure it's perpendicular to this side. See how I'm trying to make two right angles right there, okay? And you're going to cut along that line there. When you cut, before you cut too much, I want you again to label, we've got angles four, five, and six, and then we have angles seven, eight, and nine. All right, so when you finish cutting, you should have three separate triangles. We have the big one that's green, that's labeled one, two, and three. We have the medium size one in blue, that's four, five, and six. And then the smallest one in orange here is seven, eight, and nine. Notice that angle two is the right angle in that one, angle five is the right angle in that one, and angle eight is the right angle in the smallest one. So the reason I'm doing this is we're going to be exploring these triangles. And if I were to orient them so that they are all facing the same way as this green one, so if I redraw this blue one and I put the right angle at the top, so this would be the angle five, and that skinnier angle where angle one is, so that's angle four. And then um, angle six would be right here. And then if I do the same thing with the orange one where I put the right angle at the top, the skinny angle at the top too, so that would be the angle seven, and then angle nine would be down here. So if I were to orient them all the same, we would we could measure actually measure this with protractors, and obviously the right angles are congruent, and these angle one, angle four, and angle seven would be congruent, and then therefore three, nine, and six would all be congruent. We could also measure them with a ruler, and if you measure this side right here, that would be proportional to this side right here and that side right there. So if you made a ratio out of the two legs, that would be the same ratio as the two legs in all of the triangles. So what does that mean? That would mean, well, we're going to talk about what that means in a little bit. Before we get into the theorems, I want to talk about a concept called the geometric mean. Okay, so it's also it can be called the mean proportional, but I will refer to it as the geometric mean. So what that means is, remember we talked about means are on this diagonal and extremes are on this diagonal. When I have the geometric mean is the same value, right? the extremes can be whatever they are, but if the, the means are the same value, that's what we call um, a mean proportional or a geometric mean. So for example, if I say, let's give some values to this. Let's say I have A is 5 and B is 7. And then the geometric mean has to be the same value. So if I wanted to know the geometric mean, let's say I don't know what that is, um, because I don't really, I'm just making that up on the fly. So I would put X's there. So, but these have to be the same value. All right, so if I want to know what does that have to be, if I cross multiply, I would get x squared equals 5 times 7, which is 35, and then I would square root that. So I would get x is the square root of 35. 
Okay, so that is what we call the geometric mean. I wouldn't have know that the square root of 35 has to be in both of those spots. Okay, so what's the difference between arithmetic mean and geometric mean? Remember, arithmetic mean, I'm adding two numbers together and then dividing by two. So if I was doing the arithmetic mean between 3 and 9, I would do 3 plus 9 divided by 2. Right, so that would be 12 divided by 2, which is 6. All right, that's kind of like the average, right? But the geometric mean, that means I'm going to do the square root of those two things multiplied together. So that would be the square root of 27, which if we wanted to reduce, we could say is 3 root 3. Okay, so very different numbers. So I don't want you to confuse geometric mean with arithmetic mean. In pre-calculus, you're going to be learning about arithmetic sequences versus geometric sequences, and you will come back to this idea. But we're going to use in the geometric mean, in our case, for some geometry and similar triangles. So going back to that triangle that we cut up on the diagonal, all right, this triangle ABC, that big one, is like the big triangle we talked about. And then these, this is the smaller triangle, and then this is the medium-sized triangle. So we said that the angles were congruent and then the sides were proportional. So remember what that means. That means that these would be similar triangles. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle CBD. So notice that they're doing the right angle last. <laughs> that threw me off for just a minute. So D is our right angles in both of those. And these would all be similar. Okay, so we could write those sides as proportionals, right? So proportional statements. Okay, so let's think about how we could use that. We have this roof and it has a cross section that is a right triangle. And then we have these dimensions and we're trying to find the height of the roof this altitude, okay? So that's, remember, we call the altitude. Um, altitude is the same thing as height. So <clears throat> if I wanted to figure out how high is that, we can use our proportional triangles, our similar triangles. So I'm going to draw this, um, this big triangle, triangle ABC. I'm going to orient it so that my right angle is um, to the left. So I'm going to make it look like this small triangle right here. So we have this small triangle right here where I have the hypotenuse on the right. That's my hypotenuse, 7.8. And then the height, the longer leg is on the left. So if I do that with my big triangle, my hypotenuse of the big triangle is right here, right? That's across from my um, right angle. It's the biggest side of my big triangle. So that's 14.6. And then if my longest side, is, uh, longest leg rather, is the 12.3. So that's going to go here on the left. And then 7.8 of the big triangle is the shortest side. So that would go there. So now this one, this one is oriented the same way as this one. So it might be easier for us to write a proportion now. We're trying to solve for H. So H matches up with the 12.3, and then um, the hypotenuse of our, eight, of our H triangle is 7.8. That should match up with our hypotenuse here. So I hypotenuse and hypotenuse, that should be 14.6. Notice that I kept the measurements from the small triangle in my numerators, and then the measurements from my big triangle in the denominators. Okay, and then I matched up corresponding sides vertically. Okay, so keep, make sure you're setting up your proportions correctly. So now all we have to do is cross multiply. So 7.8, I'm going to grab my calculator again um, to do this since we have decimals. So 7.8 times 12.3 gave me 95.94. Oh, I forgot my H here. And then I'm going to divide by the 14.6. And I'm getting that my H is 6.57. Okay. And that would be, oh, did they give us dimensions, a unit? Hmm. They didn't give us, I, I would assume maybe feet. <laughs> okay, so that's how we can use those similar triangles to help us that. 
Now the other thing I want to talk about is we've got this other theorem called heartbeat. And if we were to do um, look at all of the proportions in our in our uh, right triangles here, here's what we would find. If we have a right triangle and the altitude from the right triangle to the hypotenuse, if we have that dividing that triangle into two other triangles, so that's exactly the situation that we started with today. So that's the setup. That's, you have to have this situation in order for this heartbeat theorem to work. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay. The length of the altitude, Okay. so we're talking about that H, right? the CD. The length of the altitude is the geometric mean. So that means that it has to be the same value um, on the mean uh, diagonal. So notice that they set up this proportion right here. You see how CD is the same on that mean diagonal? And it says it's the geometric mean of the lengths of the two segments. So they're ta when they talk about the two segments, they're talking about the hypotenuse being broken up. So this was the original hypotenuse, that red line. But if I break that up into the two pieces from the altitude, I have those two spots. So they're saying AD and BD. So it's the geometric mean of that hypotenuse that got split up. So the reason I call that heartbeat is it kind of reminds me of a heartbeat monitor. So if I were to set this up so that I'm uh, doing my proportion, it would first start with BD and then go up CD, come back down CD, and go back over AD. So it's like doing that, <laughs> like a heartbeat. All right, so that's a, a way to help you remember how to set up that proportion. You can also just remember that the altitude is the geometric mean of those two pieces of the hypotenuse. So how would I use this? Well, now if I have a situation like this and I want to solve for y, notice I don't have all of the pieces that we had when we were doing similar triangles. So I can use my heartbeat. Notice that this is the altitude. All right, and if I do my heartbeat, it would go 2 then y, then come back down to y, and then 8. All right, so I would say 2 over y equals y over 8. Or in other words, y is the geometric mean of those two different segments from the hypotenuse. So I would say y squared equals 8 times 2 is 16. Do the square root, and y is 4. So we can solve that missing piece of the triangle using that heartbeat theorem. And so in this one, I can do the same thing, but notice that my variable is um, in a different spot. All right, so this one, if I try to do that, I would go Z, then here, I don't know the altitude, do I? So I don't know two of the pieces. So actually, this one, I cannot try, I cannot do heartbeat even if I try, because I have essentially two variables, right? I'm trying to find the the altitude and this piece of the hypotenuse. So when we have this situation, we can use another theorem called the boomerang. All right, so in this time, again, if we were to look at all these proportions that we have with these triangles, it, it creates lots of cool things. So if we have this setup, then the length of each of the leg of the right triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to that leg. Ooh, that's a lot of words, right? So what's the geometric mean? The geometric mean is the leg, okay? So for example, if I wanted to do the leg, this leg, CB, notice that in this one, CB is the geometric mean, okay? Then they're saying that's going to be the ge geometric mean of the hypotenuse. Okay, so we have the hypotenuse. That's this whole side. All right, so that's AB. And then I have the geometric mean of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse. Oh, I've I circled the wrong hypotenuse, but the segment of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to the leg. So now we're talking about just this piece of the hypotenuse that's closest to that leg. All right, that's the DB. 
All right, now, if I wanted to do that for the other leg of the triangle, this doesn't just work for a CB, it works also for the other leg. So the other leg of this right triangle is AC. Okay, so notice that AC now is the geometric mean. Okay, I still have the whole hypotenuse, right? The whole hypotenuse is AB. So that's still the whole hypotenuse. But now the segment of the hypotenuse that's closest to this leg, it's not DB anymore, it's AD. So this is the segment of the hypotenuse that's closest to that leg. So we call that boomerang because if I, if I try to, if you've ever thrown a boomerang, you throw it and it comes back to you and sometimes it just wants to keep going. So if I start maybe with the DB, the segment closest to that leg, so I start here at D. I go along that hypotenuse to the corner, go up to the leg, come back down the leg, and then it comes all the way across. All right, so to the AB. All right, so it's like it, it comes back to you and, and keeps on going past you. So it wraps around and, and, um, and maybe hits you in the face. You could do that, the same thing with the other one. So instead of, if we start at, D, instead of going to the right, I could go to the left. So I could go AD, up that leg, AC, back down that leg, and then wrap back around the whole thing. So it's just a visual to help you see it. If that doesn't help you, then just remember what the geometric mean is. So how can we use that? So if I'm doing this one, find your altitude, right? Start in the middle of that hypotenuse. All right, so go either way. So this one says I'm starting with 9. So I'm going to trace along this side. So go 9, then X, then come back down X, and now we're going all the way across. So all the way across, that would be 9 plus 11. Right? So that's going to be X squared is equal to 9 times, this would be 20, right? So we're going to be doing X squared is equal to 180. And then if we do the square root of 180, we can either keep that as um, a reduced radical or I can get a decimal, depending on what the problem wanted. If we're just doing this for practice, keep it as a square root. But if this were a word problem, 13.4 would probably be more useful. All right, same thing here. If they wanted us to find TU, TU is this leg. All right, so let's let's call that x. Okay, so if I'm doing this, I'm start find your your altitude. Here's your altitude. Start in the middle of the hypotenuse, starting at w. So I want to go to the 13 side first because this is my leg that I'm that I'm trying to find. So I want to do 13 over x equals x over that whole hypotenuse. So 13 over x equals x over that whole hypotenuse, which is 20. So x squared is equal to 260. Take the square root of that. And in exact form, it would be 2 root 65. As a decimal, it would be 16.12. Okay. So that's how we can use these new theorems with right triangle, similar right triangles. Pretty cool.